It's the rematch you've all been waiting for! The first Cloud Bowl back in 2019 saw Amazon's AWS take down Microsoft Azure in a race to spin up a Windows virtual machine. Then in 2020, we saw the same outcome as they created Linux VMs. Well, we're back to a rematch of the first Cloud Bowl as they aim to start a Windows Server instance. But there's a twist! Adam Gordon, who had represented Azure in both the previous Cloud Bowls, has been traded to Amazon and will be competing for AWS today! He'll face off against rookie phenom Mike Roderick. Both competitors have been warming up, and Mike has been won the toss and elected to go first. So, Mike, let's start that clock! All right, here we go. I'm already in my resource group Cloud Bowl, which I had to create because unlike AWS, we like organization in Azure. And I'm gonna to choose to create a 2019 data center image. I'm gonna provide my subscription and my resource group. I'll give my VM a name. Choose my region to store my metadata. We'll put that over in East US, nice and close. Uh, and I am gonna change this or make sure I'm selecting something comparable to what Adam's gonna create over there in AWS. So one vCPU, one gigabit of, mem gigabit of memory, put in my username and my password a couple of times. To make sure I know what the heck I put in there. All right, I'm going to leave the default ports for RDP open up. I'm going to click Next to go to Disks. I'm going to use the premium SSDs. I'll leave that default. Jump over to Networking. I'm going to create a new VNet, a new subnet, and I'll give this VM a public IP address on that. Attach the default network security group. Management, I'm just going to disable my boot diagnostics. I'll click Advanced. No scripts, no extensions, tags, don't have any of that and it's off to the races. We'll click review and create. We'll let that validate, make sure I provided all the information required to spin up this VM image. As Soon as it passes, I can click create and we're off to the races. We will see how long Azure takes to spin up my VM. I know we were a little bit embarrassed on that last Cloud Bowl of Microsoft, but we've talked to the folks out there at Microsoft and they've guaranteed, they've promised me we're gonna get a little better performance this time, hopefully enough to edge us past good old AWS. So we'll let this run. We can see I've got deployment is in progress and you notice I had a bunch of resources just popped up. So it's creating all of those things that are associated with this VM. The network security group, the network adapter, the public IP address, the virtual network, the subnet, it's attaching that. The last thing that it's doing now is creating the virtual machine itself, creating those disks, getting it all set up. So we are close. We don't have much left. Hopefully Adam's getting a little bit nervous at this point. Actually, I was thinking about running out for uh, an espresso just because you're <laughs> keeping me waiting so long. But that's okay. I'll try to stay awake until you actually finish. Okay, yeah, I'll try to. You know, it, it is tricky. They give you the deployment in progress, but no real progress bar. So it could be a minute, it could oh, be 10. There, there we go, look at that. We're gonna go click on go to resource and I'll zoom in and everybody can see that my status is running. We are finished. Very impressive performance! For his first appearance in the Cloud Bowl, Mike was calm as a cucumber. He must have ice water in his veins. I'm being told it is the fastest time Azure has ever put up in Cloud Bowl history. But will it be fast enough? Adam has the experience and is looking for his first championship. So let's start the clock and see what he can do! It's a good run through, Mike. Appreciate it. And thank you for, uh, for doing that. Let's uh, take it over to the AWS side, which is what I'm going to be doing. We'll do the same thing with one exception before we start the clock, before we get started. Just in case you're not familiar with AWS, you saw Mike create a resource group. He was kind enough to tell us that it's because he likes organization, unlike what we have over on the Amazon side, which couldn't be further from the truth. But we'll let that statement lie for the moment. But the real thing I want to point out is I don't need to have a resource group to start the VM creation process. So you're going to see my process is going to look a little bit different. I'm going to start in the marketplace, essentially where Mike went to after the resource group. That's where I'm going to start and just grab what's called an AMI, an Amazon uh, machine image, which is basically the, the image we use to see the virtual machine. And then we're going to start the creation process from there. It's basically going to look the same at that point. So just be on the lookout for that in case you're wondering why the, the demonstration is not an exact replication on both sides, okay? All right, so Mike, is it good for me to uh, get going? Are you feeling comfortable? I'm ready, Adam. Let's see what you've got. All righty. All right, so join me here. We're going to put my screen up and then we'll get going just like we did with Mike. So as I said, we're about to get started. We're in the marketplace. I'm going to go ahead, click here. We're going to start the clock. I have to search for a Windows image. We're going to do that really quickly. Hit enter. We're going to come back. There is my server 2019 base image. That's the one I'm going to use. 
I'm gonna click select. We're then gonna go ahead, walk through. I'm gonna select the actual instance, note vCPU and memory one and one, just like Mike did. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that selected by default. We're then gonna go ahead and click our configuration instance details. I'm gonna accept all the defaults here, just like Mike did, really no changes at all. We're gonna go ahead and click add storage. I'm gonna create and accept the default storage. We're gonna click and no tags to be added, just like Mike did. I'm gonna configure my security group. We're allowing RDP just like Mike was allowing so that, there we go, we can get in and connect if we need to. I'm gonna review and launch. I'm gonna go ahead and see all the details here. I'm gonna go ahead and click launch, but I have an unusual thing. I've selected an existing key pair or created a new one, or I can opt out and acknowledge that I will be able to access this VM knowing the password. I already know what the password is, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, bypass the key pair, and we're gonna get started. You'll see we're initializing the launch. Our instance is launching. We're waiting on that. Now I'm gonna click view instances down below just so we can see when it does come up. We're not done yet but we are getting close the way Mike was. I'm gonna go ahead and click view instances. We're gonna watch it right over here. And when that instance state goes from pending to actually running, we'll know that we are complete. We don't get that pop-up that says mission accomplished the way we do over in Azure. Uh, so as a result, we just have to kind of keep an eye on it. And by the way, let's stop the clock. Notice right there, running, we are done. Wow. All right, I have to say that was pretty darn quick. I told you. You know, and if you want to borrow some of our developers, we could get you one of those complete pages made up for you. It doesn't look like it really matters too much. <laughs> spent a lot of time on the nice looking colors and graphics, but you didn't spend quite as much time on the just getting the job done part of the program. What a nail biter. That came down to the wire, but AWS defends its title. I think it's about time we refer to them as a dynasty. Right up there with Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls, Tom Brady with the Patriots, and the Habsburgs with the Holy Roman Empire. The competitors are still with us, so Adam, I have to ask, what do you attribute this victory to? You know, I worked out hard, and I just, I just thought about it. I envisioned kicking Mike's butt, and sure enough, we were successful. All kidding aside, you know, AWS is just quicker at spinning up those instances. It doesn't have a lot to do with me or Mike. It just really has to do with how quickly the underlying architecture works. And we just were quicker out of the gate and quicker to get the job done. And Mike, tough loss, but you must be proud of your performance. Do you think anyone can beat AWS? Well, you know, I, I will say that that was pretty darn quick on the AWS side, but I am going to throw a little asterisk out there behind his win. I think next time, if I'm lucky enough to make it back to the Cloud Bowl next year, we go for a desktop because I happen to know that while his machine was quicker to spin up, getting access to it might have been a different story. Keyword there, might. <laughs> might have been. Talking like the gracious loser that Mike always winds up being in these cloud bowls. All kidding aside though, you know, it is an important point Mike's making and maybe worth a rematch after all. And I'm willing to come back and throw the gauntlet down again and we'll see who is faster, not just to deploy, but faster to the desktop. Oh, controversy. That's what the Cloud Bowl's all about. But we'll have to settle that on the field of play on the next matchup. If you want to learn all about AWS, Azure, or even other technologies like Google Cloud, head to itpro.tv and check out all the cloud courses. Until next year, I'm Zach Mibbis, signing off from the 2021 Cloud Bowl. 